Getting Things Done by David Allen. The subtitle of the book is The Art of Stress-Free Productivity. And that's why you need to listen to this. You need to watch this. Because if you are stressed out while you're doing your work, if you are not being able to be productive because there are so many things weighing on your mind because you're flooded with all sorts of things that are coming at you, if as an entrepreneur you have so many things that you need to deal with that you cannot focus on what is the most important thing right now, if, you are, if you're losing your productivity because of all of these reasons, there's something that, is, that you are not doing right. And that's where David Allen comes into the picture. He is almost the guru of um, the modern productivity movement of figuring out how to be productive. And the first idea in the book is that you are using your mind wrong. Now, what that means is that we're all used to keeping things in our minds. Someone says, hey, call me at 7 p.m. tomorrow. And we're like, okay, I'll call you at 7 p.m. And we just keep a record of that in our mind or someone calls you and says hey we should do this on Saturday and you just think about it and you put it on your in your head and you never really put it in your system and what you're doing is you're using your head as a place to store all these different things and David Allen says that is a wrong 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 way of doing things because your mind is not necessarily for keeping ideas, not for storing ideas. It is for having ideas. It is for creating ideas. Very big distinction here. Your mind is not for keeping ideas, not for storing ideas. It's for having ideas, for creating ideas. An example of this is a, a story from Einstein's life. One of his colleagues asked him, Hey, Albert, what is your phone number? And Einstein did not remember his phone number. And his colleagues started laughing. He's like, what kind of uh, physicist are you, a Nobel laureate, who doesn't even remember his own phone number? And Einstein said, why would I waste my precious mental resources on remembering something as trivial that I could just look up in a phone book? And he just proceeded to look up his phone number in the phone book and told the guy. A very important lesson here for all of us, we're keeping too many things in our heads. We're keeping, we're trying to remember too many things in our heads. And it is important that we somehow figure out a way to use our mind properly. The second idea is mind like water. Now what that means is that we're appropriately engaged with what is coming at us right now. What happens, let's say there's a lake and you throw a little pebble in that lake. Well, the pebble falls in the water, some water splashes, and then it's calm again. You throw a big boulder, again, there's a big splash, and again, the water is calm again. You throw anything at that water, the water just assumes the shape of that thing, and then just calm again. Similarly, we need to operate with our mind. We need to be appropriately engaged with whatever it is that is coming at us in the moment, rather than be constantly worried about everything else that is going on around us. Now, let me ask you this. Right now, as you're watching this or as you're listening to this, are you doing 10 different other things? Possibly. And the question then becomes, is that the right way to deal with all those other things? Or is that the right way to deal with this particular piece of education that you're getting right now? And realize that you're probably doing this across all the different domains in your life. You're doing this again and again. When you're working, you're checking your email, and you're answering your phone calls, and you're talking to a colleague. Or you're not appropriately engaging with what is in front of you. You're trying to do all these different things without being, or you might be too hassled, too frazzled. Let's say there's a really important project, and what you're doing is, Instead of focusing on the project, you are so stressed out that you're getting frazzled, you're getting nervous, you're getting irritated. Now that is not the appropriate response. It's not the appropriate level of engagement that that project requires. But unfortunately, you're not able to calm your mind and hence your engagement level suffers. So when something is really important, we need to be fully engaged. When something is not really that important, we can figure out ways to be less engaged or completely disengage. But Proper engagement, properly engaging with what is in front of us 
is really crucial for our mental well-being and for us to be really productive and to produce high quality work. Another book I want to refer to here is The Power of Full Engagement by Tony Schwartz and Jim Blair because the idea in the book is that when we do something important, we need to be fully engaged in our lives. We need to be it's not that we're running low on time. Most of the times we're not managing our energy, our focus, our resources to bring the best. We're not able to be fully engaged with what is in, in front of us. And we need to figure out ways to be fully engaged. Now David Allen takes this from a different uh, perspective. He's talking about it from a perspective of productivity, but similar ideas that we need to be fully engaged in order to do great work. The third big idea we need to talk about is psychic bandwidth and the idea of focus and control. We have the psych, we think that we're unable to do something because we don't have enough time, that we're running out of time, that even only if we had a few more hours every day, we could do these things, but that is not the case. The problem is not necessarily the lack of time, but the lack of that psychic energy, that space to create something that space in your psyche to be able to do something new, to be able to do something important because you're, there's a mishmash going on inside of your head. There's too many things going on in your head for yourself to have that space to do what is most important right now. And similarly, the idea of control and focus is that we're, we need both focus and control, not control in a... Uh, in a negative way in the sense we're trying to control our lives and control the people around us. That's not the idea. But to feel like we're in control, to feel like we are driving it in the right direction, and to also feel like we have focus. Because if we don't have focus, we can have a lot of control, but if we don't have focus, we're in trouble. Similarly, we could have a lot of control, but no focus, or no focus and no control. They're all problematic scenarios. Our our key to great results is having focus and control. That's when we're the captain and the commander of the ship. So realize that you're looking for focus and control, and that is why GTD comes in. That's why this whole idea of getting things done, of stress-free productivity comes in. Now, how do you do it? That's the next big idea. Now let's, let me give you a brief, a very quick overview of the GTD system because it's a really big system, but at least an understanding of it. The first idea is to collect to understand that you need to have trusted places where you will collect all the information that is coming at you. Let's say there's a bill, a physical bill that comes. So you have a physical inbox at home or in your office where you keep your bills. Or let's say someone says, hey, call me tomorrow. So you take a note on your phone, your Evernote. Or an email comes in, so you put it on your inbox. So realize that you have certain appointed trusted, trusted systems where you will collect all the information that is coming at you. You don't have to process it right now. You don't have to do those things right away, but at least know you will store them in all these different places. So understand the importance of having trusted places, trusted uh, locations where you will ensure you will take all the information that is coming at you and keep, that, keep, that, keep those bits and pieces of information in, all, in your trusted storage locations. Because through the day, you probably get 20, 30, 40, 50 different reminders of doing this, do that, of your brain is constantly thinking about, oh, I need to do this, I need to pay this bill, I need to worry about the dishwasher, I need to uh, talk to my friend, I need to you know, think about this birthday celebration, I need to do this, I need to do, uh, think about this vacation, I need to think about my 401k, I need to think about my finances, I need to think about my parents, I need to think about my kids, I need to think about my wife, I need to think about this, and th the list goes on and on, and your brain is constantly interrupting yourself. But... Your brain is constantly interrupting yourself because it is concerned that you haven't paid attention to this idea yet. That it is not trusted, it, is not, it does not feel like it will be attended to unless it is constantly reminding of it. But once you put those things in a trusted place where you will come back and review, then the brain can relax. Now it knows that this thing will be taken care of so it can let go of this. Uh, thing that it is reminding you of. So really important, first idea is to be able to collect in trusted sources. 
The second, the second idea is to process. When you, once you have collected and once the item is in front of you now, when you sit down to review, you realize, okay, should I, what is the next action? What is the next thing that needs to be done for this thing to move forward? And you identify, you figure out the next actionable step. That is processing. The third step is to organize what you have processed. You processed all this stuff, you know what all needs to be done, but now you need to organize this information so that you can figure out a way when and how you can do those things. The fourth big idea, and probably one of the big keys to GTD is review. Doing a weekly review, spending a couple of hours every week and a dedicated time keeping a rhythm to this. Um, and David Allen says that having this weekly review is just like magic. That is the key component to all of GTD. So in this review, you look at all of the cap, all of your collection, all, all of your uh, trusted locations, and you say, okay, these are the things that need to be, pro these are the things that need to be processed. This is the processing, this, they need to be organized, and these are the things I need to do. So figuring out what needs to be done, when it needs to be done, and all that stuff has to happen during this weekly review. And the fifth idea is to do. To do those things as you decided in your review. Again, to recap, first of all, collect. Second is process, third is organize, fourth is review, and fifth is do. This is a system that you have to do and it is a weekly rhythm. It is really important to keep a weekly rhythm to your review process so that you can execute on this on a weekly basis. Now, if you want to get a quick uh, summary of, this, of the insights, head on over to this link and we'll send you the, the key summary, the key insights.